love and nostalgia for the jelly cranberry sauce love ocean spray cans. But up until the 1940s, cranberries were only a New England staple. In 1930, a Massachusetts man named Marcus Uran is the head of a cooperative of local cranberry farmers. Marcus Uran actually began as a lawyer and decides to quit his day job and grow cranberries. He grew up around the cranberry industry in Maine and saw that as an industry that maybe was a little bit more zen than being a lawyer. Marcus Uran convinced his competitors to join his co-op so that together these cranberry farmers could have more control over industry standards and pricing. The interesting thing about cranberries is they can only really grow in a very specific type of soil, most notably in Massachusetts along the coast. Native to New England, cranberries were introduced to colonists by the Native Americans. One of the first American dishes that was made with the cranberry was actually made by the Wampanoag Indians of the Northeast. They took dried cranberries, dried meat, and animal fat and ground it into this sort of energy bar that kept for long periods of time that they could pack and take with them on the hunt or on the trail. The first instance of cranberry sauce is found in America's first published cookbook, American Cookery, written by Amelia Simmons in 1796. It calls for serving roast turkey with onions and boiled cranberries mashed into a sauce. But right now, the only demand for cranberries is during late fall in New England. Starting this year, we will sell cranberries outside New England, all over the country. This is something that the cranberry people have been fighting for probably a century. Nobody is interested in cranberries except in New England once a year, so they're madly trying to sell cranberries. Uran's bold strategy is to expand their market and take the cranberry from a local favorite to a national one. Harvested for only six weeks out of the year from late September to late November, and because they weren't preserved, cranberries were really considered only a seasonal food that would be eaten in the Northeast during the winter holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Harvesting cranberries is a slow, painstaking process. Uran's plan is to use an old but quicker harvesting method, which will allow him to ship sooner and farther before they spoil. In the 1850s, some cranberry farmers were using what was called the wet harvest method. So what that means is you flood the bog at harvest time. When you do that, it obviously raises all the vines to the surface, but air pockets within the berry itself begin to sort of inflate. It helps them separate from the vine way more easily, and sometimes they'll just kind of come and float to the surface, something that would take nearly a month to do now can be done in an afternoon. But flooding the bogs isn't foolproof. It's a risky process that could damage the berries. Yet Uran directs all of the cranberry farmers in the coalition to flood 100% of their bogs. It's kind of amazing to have that much faith in yourself to take a risk that big. It all looks like this. The flooding has broken the cranberries apart. He ends up with a huge stockpile of mashed up cranberries, and he really needed to come up with a way to sell them. Uran's solution will one day turn his cranberries into an iconic company that earns a staggering $2 billion a year and create a Thanksgiving staple that sells over 5 million gallons.